Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist Church on this Easter Sunday morning. Happy Easter. Our worship leader this morning is Elisa Riley, and she will be leading us through our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Please stand for the call to worship. Shout it from the mountaintops. Christ is risen. Make it echo off canyon walls. Christ is risen. Let it ride on every wave. Christ is risen. Let it soar on wings of a dove. Christ is risen. Plant it deep in your hearts. Christ is risen. Sing it over and over. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Please join me for the opening prayer. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is, hid is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory.
The gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this morning uh, we had the Easter sunrise service indoors. I think it's the first time in my 15 years here that we've had to have it inside, but just because of the rain mist that was going on at the time. But as we know, we kind of just have to work with what we got, right? We just have to deal with the circumstances around us and, and work with what we've got. Work is, um, I think, an important word in America. Um, and we have even a, a thing called the Protestant work ethic that is part of our history, part of our culture part of who uh, we are as Americans. It was the Protestant work ethic that helped the early settlers to survive. I mean, it was that, that's what they had to do. They had to work hard just to survive. And then once we got past the survival state uh, or, or stage as a country, we still worked hard to become a good country. And we have, uh, reaped a lot of benefits from that, all that work that, that has happened in our country. We have to be careful though with that, that mindset, with that Protestant work ethic that goes on. It's great for us in terms of our, our, our working life, but uh, it gets a little sticky when we get into theology and we talk, uh, start talking about uh, God and, and, uh, uh, and uh, our salvation. A lot of times when we think about uh, Easter, uh, some of the phrases that come up is Jesus rose from the dead, up from the grave he arose. We sing that song. G Christ is risen, is part of our liturgy. And when hearing those words, we can tend to think of this as something that Jesus did. But it's not. You listen to the words of the angel here. He has been raised. That's the passive tense. He has been raised. He didn't do the raising. He has been raised. We have to keep clear in our minds that it was God who raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus did not do that. Jesus, in fact, had to trust and have faith that when he died, God was still going to do something with that. And he did. He had that faith. He had that trust. And God did do something with that. He had 
but not my, oh, there we go. <laughs> I lost my microphone there for a while. Uh, he has been raised. It's a, it's a matter of how we approach our salvation. Do we earn it? Or is it a free gift given to us? Did Jesus earn it? Or was his, his resurrection something that God did because Jesus trusted in him? God, God did that because Jesus had faith in God. It's easy for us to get into thinking that our lives, we have to do something in order to earn our way to heaven. Because in our culture, that's how we earn our money, how we earn our living, how we earn the way we live. But with God, it's a different thing. With God, it's always about a gift. I've never thought of this before. But this year, as I was thinking about this, he has been raised. And the way that God, it is God's love and God's gift to us that raised Jesus from the dead. That how closely Easter and Christmas are related. We celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ, as the gift that God gives us by coming into our world in the form of a baby born in a manger. But we really don't open that gift until Easter's morning. That's when we receive the gift of salvation. That's when we receive God's gift that is born on Christmas Day. There's a story that uh, was written by O. Henry, and you've heard, probably heard it before, the story of the gift of the Magi. And it's about a couple in New York in right around 1900 and they're poor, they've, they're just starting in life, they're newly married, and uh, it's Christmas time, and they want to get gifts for each other, and they really want to get special gifts for the person they love so much. She's well known for her hair, uh, it's beautiful hair, and so what she's always wanted are some beautiful combs to go in her hair. He's got this family watch that has been passed down from generation to generation, a gold watch. But what he really wants is a chain that would match and be a special chain that would go well with that special watch. And if you heard the story, you know what they do. She goes and she cuts her hair off to raise money to buy the chain for his watch. He goes and he sells the watch to get money for her combs. They give each other their presents. They open them up and they laugh. What they gave each other really was the gift of love that Christmas. The gift of love that God gives to us through Christ. And so as today we recognize and open this gift that God has given us. This gift of salvation. We also recognized it was not given to us because we earned it. It was not given to us because we worked hard for it. Yes, our life in God is important. And the way we live our life is important. But by doing the things that we do 
as the children of God, we do not earn our way to heaven. It is already given to us. That's what we celebrate today. That gift of love that God gave to us. That gift of life that God gives to us. Because God worked with what he had. People. People who can remain faithful through thick and through thin in remembering that gift of love. I invite you to stand and turn in the back of the red hymnal to number 883. For our statement of faith for today. It's entitled, A Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada. Will you join with me? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer. And we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence.
Loving God, we give you thanks this day, especially this day, as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the world around us, for the rain that waters your earth, for the green plants greening up around us in the hills, in the valleys, in our yards. the flowers and blossoms, the colors that we see around us. We give you thanks for seasons of growth, for seasons of harvest, for seasons of work, and seasons of rest. We give you thanks for family and for friends, people who love and care for us and we for them. We give you thanks for neighbors, co-workers, people in our communities whose lives make our work and our lives better. Lord, we pray for those in need, for those who are hungry or thirsty, those who do not have adequate shelter. We pray for those who live in zones of war, for those who've lost their entire towns because of war. Those struggling to rebuild after tornadoes, floods, mudslides. Lord, help us to reach out to those in need in the ways that we can. To share out of the abundance that you give us. Lord, we pray for our cities, our states, our countries. Guide our leaders, help them to make wise decisions for the people they serve. Help us all to recognize we are your family, your children, each and every one of us. Lord, we pray for your church as we celebrate your resur resurrection, bringing us new life. Help us to feel that new life in our daily lives, in our churches, in our families. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve our God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.